Hi, thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about relays today. A relay is a special electromagnetic device that allows a light circuit to activate a heavier circuit. So just like a relay race runner who's running a race with a baton in his hand, runs around the track and passes his duties on to the next person so they can continue the race, the relay kind of does the same thing. And we're going to talk about how it works. So let's get started. Okay, this is the first part of a relay. So if we picked up a relay and we looked inside of it and we took this cover off the top of it, what you'd see inside is a little electromagnet with a very fine winding, almost hair-like wire around it. Now, with a relay, what we're actually gonna do is use a light-duty circuit to command a bigger circuit on top. So this circuit is not meant to carry a lot of capacity. So this little wire, it could come from a computer, it could come from in this case, we're sending it from a battery and controlling with a switch, but we, it could be controlled by the computer in a car. And it can go into the dash area of the vehicle with very light wiring, it's not bulky. And so it doesn't take much to create an electromagnet on this one. So now let's say we're gonna take a cooling circuit, a cooling fan circuit, and we need to drive a fan that runs a fair amount of amperage on it. So what we could do is run a heavy wire from the battery area. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, now what we have here is a secondary heavy duty circuit that if we activate this micro switch over here, it's gonna create a magnetic field in the electromagnet inside the relay and that's gonna pull down on that switch within the relay that's, and the power comes through at a heavier rate up into the motor at the demand that it needs. A relay is simply a device that allows a light duty circuit to command the heavy duty circuit to drive something of higher amperage. And if we put a box around it, we have ourselves a relay. Okay, now we've got this uh, relay right now wired into a switch. And if I activate the switch, this relay will actually start working. You can hear a click in there. So what's happening is, if I look inside of a relay, what I really have is a coil of wire or a winding with a very, very fine caliber wire in it. So it's almost a little bit thicker than a, than a hair. And basically there is a, one end of the winding goes to the positive, the other end of the winding goes to negative. And if we send power to it, it mechanically, through magnetism, pulls a, sw pulls a switch closed. And that switch can be used to do work. Now, you can see when I activate my little switch that I've connected to the power source, my green wire, which is quite a fine wire, goes to the ground. And my red wire is gonna travel through the switch to the positive of the battery. Now, by activating the switch, just watch it close there. See that switch, how it works when I toggle that? It's the same as me doing that. Now, so what? What's that going to accomplish? Well, this little tiny circuit, which can be hooked to a little micro switch in inside the car, doesn't require big bulky wires to get to the inside of the vehicle. And we can get this closer to the source that we want to activate. So say we want to activate a horn on a vehicle, we could run a larger wire to this relay and since this relay, this magnetic field is activating a heavier duty switch, we can send power to this relay and out to the horn. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna actually bring a horn along here, connect it, send uh, a connector over to the power of the horn. And we're gonna take a ground lead, negative, 
and attach it to the body of the horn. Now I'm going to connect a positive power source up to my relay. So that's the positive. And the other wire there is going to my positive on the horn. And I've got a ground feeding the horn body itself. Now, if I physically come along and close a switch in the relay with my finger, the horn will blow. Now, if I use my pull-in winding, I can do the same thing. So my little circuit can activate a big circuit just by closing the switch. And you can see the magnetic field created by this winding or the pull-in winding as we sometimes call it in that switch to do the big job. So it's taking the heavy duty circuit now and passing it to the horn. So a little circuit can activate a big circuit. That's what a relay does. Now we have many uh, things in the car that use relays. For instance, a fuel pump in the back of your vehicle in the gas tank when you first put the key on. The computer in the car, which is a small little circuit, activates a relay, which can then turn on the power to the fuel pump in the back. So let's talk about solenoids now. Solenoids are used in many different components of the car. You see them in automatic transmissions to help shift the car. You see them used in the anti-locking brake system, in traction control systems, in the starter. Even a fuel injector is a type of solenoid. But what is a solenoid? Well, a solenoid is simply, if we boil it right down, it's really a cylinder with a winding wrapped around it. And in the middle of the cylinder, we place a plunger. Many times there's a spring to help return a plunger, sometimes not. But when that little winding around that cylinder is allowed to be energized, power coming in and grounded, it creates a magnetic field and it causes the plunger to move within the solenoid. Now, this is a starter solenoid I'm holding up here and it's quite large. On a starter solenoid, it does two things. The solenoid, as it's energized, gets pulled in and there's a little lever on the end that pushes the starter gear out into engagement with the flywheel. At the back of the solenoid for starter sawing, there's also a switch on the back of the housing here. So in the middle of the solenoid, there's a button. As the plunger comes back, it will push on that button, turning on a large switch back here that allows power from the battery cable to come down and send power into the starter motor itself so it'll turn, so it serves two functions. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about what this looks like inside. Okay, now as you can see, a solenoid is simply a cylinder with a plunger inside with a winding wrapped around it. If we energize the winding, send power to it through a switch, ground the other end of it, we're going to have an electromagnetic field which allows the plunger to move in and we can use the plunger movement to do work. So in this case, we've drawn a solenoid to perform a starter function. So when the solenoid is pulled in, it can move a lever out to move the starter's drive gear out into contact with the flywheel. There's a spring at the back of the solenoid in this case. Not all solenoids will have a spring, but this one does, and it'll help return the plunger to its original position. So solenoids can be used in many, many different applications to do work where linear movement is required. The solenoid. But here's a car starter solenoid. I like this because it's nice and big. We can see it really well inside. And like I said, there's a switch on the back of this solenoid right here that we send the battery cable to and the other part of the solenoid will run down the starter. We're gonna run a ground wire to the body of the solenoid where one part of the winding goes. And 
And we're going to take a power wire, or a positive wire, and we're going to run it to what we call the S-terminal, which is the pull-in winding uh, that your ignition switch uh, circuit goes to. I'm going to create a magnetic field in there. Let's find out if there's a magnetic field to do some work. So if I put that in there, you can see that it pulls it in right away. So that mechanically can now do work just by sending current, just by sending current into that solenoid. You can see with the when I let go, the spring pushes the solenoid back out. Every time we energize the solenoid, it's pulling in on the plunger doing its work. Now, if I was to look across this when I energize that, when that plunger comes up, inside of the solenoid, there's a button back there that will push on a giant switch in the back that connects that terminal to that terminal and the starter will work. So let's bring a starter over on the table to see how that all works together when I connect my starter. Okay, now if I take my starter and I connect my ground to the body of the starter, then I take my positive, just like your battery cable would, and attach it to here. I've got power going in and I've got a ground on a starter. Nothing's happening yet. But if I connect a switch going to my dash, and I'm going, to, I'm going to use this as my switch, and I connect my wire from the positive of my battery cable to the little winding on here called a pull-in winding, if I energize that, it's going to be able to send power from that cable down into the starter to make it work. And we're going to watch what happens on the end of this starter to that starter gear and watch what happens to the plunger. We've cut this one away so you can see inside. You can also see the switch on the end activated. So when I hit the trigger, you can see the switch being pulled back by the solenoid. You see the plunger moving. And you can see the gear coming out. things are made possible due to the action of the solenoid sending the switch back sending power from that side of the terminal across that switch and into the starter motor while also pushing out that what we call a starter drive gear on the end of the starter this is actually a throttle body injector off an older style car if we put power on one side of the fuel injector and touch the other one the positive you should be able to hear it click and we are, I can feel it clicking inside. Every time we do that, there's a little valve inside that opens and closes to allow fuel to come through that's under pressure and squirt down into the intake manifold to supply fuel to the engine. Here's a type of solenoid as well that was used by Ford for many years. Now this particular solenoid is a switch style solenoid. There is a plunger inside and a winding. You can hear the work it's doing internally to turn a bigger switch on and send power from the battery cable right to the starter. <laughs>